Welcome traders to another Tickno weekly market outlook for week commencing the 15th of August with me, Patrick Munley. <coughs> okay, let's check out what we've got on tap in terms of data this week, uh, starting in the US on Tuesday, July industrial production month over month. Uh, last time 0 0.3, uh, consensus now is for 0 0.2 print with uh, some analysts actually expecting a negative 0 0.2 print for July industrial production. Then we move to Wednesday and we have retail sales in the US. Headline US retail sales are expected to rise 0.1% in July, calling from June's 1% print. While the ex-autos metric is seen declining 0.1% from the prior 1% gain, the retail control will be used to help gauge initial expectations for Q3 GDP. After the two consecutive quarters of contraction this year, as it is a good gauge of consumer spending, a large component of GDP, with retail sales being reported on a nominal value, the slowing price declines could act as a headwind in July after the cooler than expected July CPI report after the June retail sales were supported by higher prices. The Atlanta Fed GDP Now model is tracking Q3 growth at 2.5%, but this will likely change throughout the next week as we get the inputs from retail sales, housing data, and industrial production. Also on Wednesday, we have the FOMC minutes. The FOMC lifted rates by 75 basis points to 2.2 to 2.5% as expected taking rates back to neutral for the first time since 2019. The only major tweak to the statement was its reassessment of the economy. The Fed now acknowledges that the recent indicators of spending and production have softened. Uh, this change will be expected to be given the softening in many key macro indicators. The statements offer no clues about what the Fed will do at its September meeting. However, during the press conference, Fed Chair Powell abandoned concrete forward guidance and said decisions will be data dependent. Uh, analysts will be looking to the minutes to see how, how many participants agreed with this approach. Since the meeting, plenty of Fed speakers have been using the data dependent line for the next decisions, but it's clear appetite is for another 75 basis point hike in, the, in September or a slower uh, 50 basis point hike. Market is now pricing uh, a lean towards the 50 basis point after the latest CPI uh, report, but the minutes will not incorporate that data. So there is a risk of the minutes sounding more hawkish, but it is also, uh, it will not have incorporated the hot July jobs reports. Given the hot jobs report and call CPI since the latest meeting, the minutes may be deemed quite stale given the Fed's data dependent stance. Then moving into Thursday, obviously initial claims. They have started to creep up. 265 uh, was the last print. Looking now for a 262 print uh, in the week ahead. Uh, continuing claims, uh, 1428. We also get July existing home sales looking for a 5.12 print there. And that rounds out the data uh, in terms of the US next week. So let's take a look at the charts from a technical perspective. <clears throat> I'm looking for the dollar to do a double correction here. Ultimately, we are looking for a test of the 102.60. From there, I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns to re-engage on the long side, looking for another push higher to tag this 110 target. At this stage, it would really take a close uh, back through monthly projected range support at 102.18 to suggest that we have a more meaningful high in place and we would then be looking back to the 101.26 level to the downside. Moving to the Eurozone in terms of the uh, data for the week ahead, uh, we kick off things in uh, Eurozone on Tuesday. We get uh, June total trade balance, looking for a negative uh, 26 print there versus the negative 24 print last time out. We also get the German ZEW survey. Uh, analysts forecast expectations to remain below pre-pandemic levels. Overall business sentiment remains depressed amid major concerns about the energy supply in Germany and the ECB's announced interest rate hike. Pandemic disruptions in China may also hurt the economic outlook. Uh, we also then get on Wednesday, uh, Q2 flash estimate GDP looking for a, point se a 0 0.7 
print there. And then on Thursday, we get July CPI, looking for that to uh, print in line with the last uh, reading, which was an 8.9 print there in terms of uh, CPI in the Eurozone. So from a technical perspective, Eurodollar has tested the descending trend line resistance, and we did see some supply come into the market on, uh, on Friday. But as we hold the pivot here at 102, I'm looking for a test of 104.18, which is the equality objective versus this current swing structure. Now, it's going to get interesting here because if we, if this setup does develop, we get a bearish reversal pattern there. We look for a move back down into the pivot. This pivot test here at the 10090 is going to be key. If we get through there, I'm anticipating we roll over, take out the current swing lows, and make a move to that yearly S3 down to the 9770s. However, if we hold the pivot, similar to the setup in terms of the uh, dollar index, we could see a double correction. At that juncture, I'd be looking for us to test the high volume low 10520s. And once we get there again, I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns to re-engage on the short side, ultimately looking for that 9770s uh, yearly S3 to get tested. <clears throat> Moving to the UK, and uh, we've got a bit of data coming out in the UK in the week ahead. On uh, Tuesday, we have the uh, June IOL unemployment rate. Looking for, th uh, looking for a 3.8 print there, and the employment change to come in at 296. Uh, analysts at Investec forecast a 240k gain in employment, and combined with higher participation rate, this should have kept the jobless rate steady at 3.8%. Base effects should bring down the rate of pay growth after one-off boosts last year where many workers returned to full-time work uh, from reduced 80% furlough pay. And then on Wednesday, we get UK CPI consensus forecast headline CPI rising to 9.7% from the 9.4%. The core is seen hold st holding steady at 5.8%. Again, analysts at Investex say the easing in supply chain issues may contain the core rate, but higher food prices should boost the headline. Uh, the latter is expected to rise above 12% in the early Q4 and remain elevated. Then round up thing, uh, things on Friday, in the UK with uh, UK retail sales. Expectations are for an unchanged headline print and uh, core reading at negative 0.4%. The two bank holidays may play havoc with the data. Analysts see no relief for the rest of the year and start of 2023 as the economy heads into recession. So from a technical perspective, uh, Sterling, Versus the current swing low that we have here, just above 120, I'm looking for an equality test up to 125.50s. Uh, from there, I watch for bearish reversal patterns to re-engage on the short side. However, we did uh, did close pretty weak on Friday. We're holding above the pivot cluster here, but if we take out that uh, that 120 gain on the downside, then I'll be looking for a retest of the prior cycle lows, 117.60, on route to a 115 test. Moving to uh, Japan, in terms of data, we are uh, on the light side there next week. We have, uh, what do we have here? So the only real uh, data of note coming this week on the 18th of August is Japan's CPI inflation for July. This could start to top out and face downside pressure. Much of the run-up to date has been driven by oil prices and obviously a weaker yen, both of which have softened of late. WTI in terms of USD terms has fallen from its peak at the $122 per barrel. Um, this prior run-up erroneously led some market participants to argue that the Bank of Japan would have to adopt some form of tightening measure and perhaps its 10-year JGB yield target was vulnerable. The problem with that narrative was always that this isn't the kind of inflation that the Bank of Japan wants. It is inclined to view the effects of inflation derived from higher oil prices and a weaker yen as a transitory and hence unlikely to deliver the medium to long run 2% uh, inflation goal. The Bank of Japan has estimated that one standard deviation move in the yen, roughly 4%, adds about 0.1 to 0.2% to inflation over the next two to eight quarters before subsiding. Further, the same paper estimated that a one standard deviation 
uh, in oil prices of roughly 15% would add 0 0.1 to 0.3% uh, to inflation before subsiding. Japan has been experiencing a relative price shock as commodity importers with a weakening currency. But these influences may be waning and the second round effects in the context of soft wage gains could be more disinflationary in Japan than elsewhere. So from a technical perspective, the dollar yen uh, did hold that 135.50 uh, test and we did see some, uh, some sell-off last week, but we consolidated Thursday and Friday. So there's the potential that we do a double correction here and retest the 136.30s before heading once again to the downside. But as long as we hold the pivot here at the 135.50s, I'm looking for a 126.88 quality test before looking to re-engage on the long side for the next move to the upside. And rounding out things down under in Australia, really the uh, Focus next week is going to be on the um, RBA minutes on Tuesday. The RBA will release the minutes from the August 2nd meeting where it hiked the cash rate target by 50 basis points to 1.85% as expected. While it reiterated that the board expects to take further steps in the process of normalizing monetary conditions and is committed to doing what is necessary to ensure that inflation in Australia returns to the target over time, but noted that it's not a preset path. Furthermore, it reaffirmed its view that inflation is expected to peak later this year and then decline back towards the 2 to 3% range and stated that a key source of uncertainty continues to be the behavior of household spending. The announcement by the RBA immediately pressured the Aussie dollar, given the lack of any major hawkish surprises. While the RBA's quarterly statement on monetary policy released uh, last week showed that the meeting was met with muted reaction, as it's largely stuck to the script uh, regarding expectations of taking further normalisation steps and the central bank's reference to not being on a preset path. And <coughs> we round out the week uh, in Australia on Thursday with the Australian Jobs Report. The July employment change is expected to show uh, the addition of 25,000 jobs versus a previous 88.4,000, while the unemployment rate and participation rates are seen steady at 3.5% and 66.8% respectively. Analysts at Westpac expect a plus 50k metric for the employment change, with the rationale being the business surveys, consumer sentiment surveys and job uh, vacancies all point to continuing solid demand for labour. Weekly pay payrolls for July did reveal some weakness, but these are not seasonally adjusted, and the ABS noted higher than usual absences for illnesses and holidays, which affect hours worked rather than employment. From a policy perspective, the RBA's priority for the time being is inflation. In the latest statement, uh, 2nd of August, Gov Governor Lowe suggested employment is growing strongly, consumer spending has been resilient, and an upswing in business investments is underway. The board is committed to doing what is necessary to ensure that inflation in Australia returns to target over time. So from a technical perspective, I've got a, a nice setup developing here. I'm watching now for a test of the equality objective versus the 68-69 low. I'm looking for a 72-28 test. Now from there, I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns to fade that move, looking then for a pullback into the pitchfork support, back into that 68-60s. And from there, once again, looking for bullish reversal patterns to re-engage on the long side. We're then targeting a test of the descending trend line resistance and the midpoint of the pitchfork up to 74.60s. And as we round things out, as always, let's take a quick look at Bitcoin and see how we're trading over the weekend here. We have tested once again that 25 level, but uh, found some supply again. I'm ultimately looking for Bitcoin now to test this ascend, uh, descending trend channel resistance, 28,120s. And from there, I'm going to be watching for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side, still looking for that 12,185 test. At this stage, we really need to see a weekly close through the downtrend channel here to suggest we have a more meaningful load in place. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 15th of August. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.